Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. Today, you are joining me, Mariska Dupria, on talking heads. So I am really excited to be here. Um, As you may or may not remember, we have worked on our communication and seeing that we can be more effective with the way that we communicate. And today we will do the very last lesson in our effective communication series. And we will look at agreements as well as expectations, which we will find out doesn't always work the way that we think they may or may not. So without further ado, let's jump into the lesson and start ourselves off. So in our effective communication, As I mentioned, agreements versus expectations. So before we jump into that, just a quick overview on what we already did. So in effective communication, we looked at the heart of the communication, the importance of what it is that we want to communicate, connecting with that other person that we're communicating with, having clarity in our communication, the intention for our communication, really listening when we are communicating. And now we're going to look at setting those agreements. So William Shakespeare mentioned that expectation is the root of all heartache. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have had many a conversation we, me and a friend will agree, or not really agree, um, to catch up for maybe drinks. And the conversation might go something like, hey, would you like to get drinks sometime? My friend would say, yes, I would love to get, get drinks. And then we just leave it at that. We don't really continue the conversation. Now, the thing is, what normally happens is, in my mind, I might think, okay, so we've agreed to drinks um, and this is going to happen in the next two weeks because we have reached that agreement, right? My friend, on the other hand, might be thinking, okay, drinks sounds great. They're a little bit busy in the next month, but the month after that, they will come back to me on a date and when they can actually catch up for drinks. So as you will notice, We have two different ideas about the drinks. Now, this does not only happen in our social life, but also happens at work. And normally, it happens at work more often than we think. So at work, we might have a big project and there's deadlines and there's things to do. And the one person thinks this person is doing certain things and the other person might think the other person is doing certain things. And because of that communication breakdown or the expectation that certain things will be done in certain time periods and not really communicating it or agreeing upon it, we run into trouble. So we don't want you guys to be going through any of that and hence why in our effective communication, we are looking at agreements. So expectations versus agreements, what's the difference? So expectations is actually all the stuff that happens 
in our own heads. It is what we think. It is what we feel. It is what's going on for us. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I cannot see into other people's heads and see all the things that's going on in there. The only way for me to discover what's going on in somebody else's head is to actually ask them or to speak to them. And this is where agreements come in. Now, I know agreements, right? We have that wee little apps and I agree. Well, I don't really agree, but let's say I agree. So this do have a tendency to happen a lot. And because it is so prominent in all the other areas that we interact, especially when it comes to things like social media or our apps and stuff like that, we forget that we're actually dealing with another human being. And when we deal with another human being, we need to actually have an agreement between the two of us, or if we are a group, between all of us, right? It is not a written, this thou shall, and this is what will happen. This is an agreement. So they look different. Now, this brings me to the question, how often do you actually set agreements? And how often is it only an expectation? So something that happened in our heads. For most of us, there's a lot of expectations that goes around and unfortunately not so many agreements. So what is it that we need to consider when we are setting agreements? So the first thing is, what do we want from this, right? Second is what is important and then preferably, not preferably actually, this is a part of an agreement is being very specific. As with the example with me and my friend, we were not specific at all in setting up our agreement for having coffee. So let's dive into these a little bit more. First off, it is really about understanding. And not only understanding my own things, but understanding the other person's part of it too. So the Dalai Lama actually put this really great when he said, when you talk, you only repeat what you already know. But when you listen, you learn something new. How often do we listen? I know most people don't. We think we listen, but we don't really listen. And for us to reach an agreement, we need to listen. And that's one of the reasons why the lesson before this one was around listening. Because for us to understand the other person, we need to listen to the other person and then work from there. So what is it that we want to try and determine when we're doing this understanding? Well, one, we want to know what the goal is, or maybe goals. There might be more than one. And my goal and the other person's goal might be a bit different, right? Especially when we have different apartments we are working in, or we might be in different teams, or as in the case with me and my friend, we have different things happening in our life, right? So the goal for me is maybe to get together because I need some social interaction and my friend's goal might be a little bit different. If I don't ask and if we don't talk about it, we don't know what the goal is. So making sure we understand the goal. And then, of course, what's the values for us that's going to play into this? Now, all of us have different values and we display them at different times and different stages in different environments. So what's the values that I think is coming through for me now? And what is the other person's values 
that's going to play into this agreement that we are setting up. And then, of course, do we have the same vision for this outcome? The thing that we're going to get at the end, where we are working towards for our agreement, is that the same? Are we looking from the same side at it? So understanding how the other person view this outcome is also really, really important. And this goes well into the next part, which is, what if I tell you what you think is important isn't necessarily important? Remember, what is important to me is not necessarily important to the other person. So this important might change a little bit. And this is where it comes into that being curious. So we want to be curious in part of the understanding as well as setting up that second part of our agreement and making sure we really unpack this a little bit more is what is ideal for us. So for both of us, not only for the one and not only for the other, but for both of us or in our team, what works for the whole team, right? What are we protecting or giving up? Sometimes people don't agree about something or agree with a specific approach or going in a specific direction because they feel that they need to give up something that they value very deeply or they want to protect something. So understanding what it is that we are trying to protect or what it is that we might be giving up helps us to reach an agreement where we actually feel that, yes, we can do this thing that is required. Now, all of the things that we do in life doesn't always give us a total autonomy. We have other things to take into consideration and there's certain parameters that we work within. So within those parameters, we need to also see what it is that we can and cannot do and how that would work for us, right? And then, of course, there's also the biases that might take place for us because, as I mentioned, the expectation is something that happens in our own head. So we might think that the other person already knows this and they may not. Or we might think that because this person is older than me, younger than me, whatever, fill in the blank, right? They think a certain way. And that's actually only us thinking that that is the case. It might not be at all. So what biases are we bringing as an individual to the table that might be influencing our expectations and the way that we communicate when we're setting up this agreement? So taking that into consideration to really think through what and how it is that we setting our um, things up in a way that we all agree on this is what's going to happen and how and all the rest of it. Which, of course, brings us to the... Well, vagueness, right. You remember I mentioned something about specifics? So if you have vague requirements, impossible deadlines, fairly intensive workloads, what can possibly go wrong, right? Well, normally loads go wrong during those situations, as we all are very aware of, and that is why it is so extremely important for us to make sure that we have those agreements set up properly. We want to make sure that we are very clear in our understanding. We want to make sure that we know exactly what it is that I need, what the other person needs, what the situation needs, right? We don't want something to be vague because as soon as it's vague, and it feels that it sort of has these fluffy sides, it becomes difficult 
to have an agreement. We don't know where the signs are. We don't know what we can and cannot do. We don't know what we agreed on. And maybe we are now expecting things that will not happen, which means we will be disappointed. And when we are effective communicators, we definitely want to make sure that this is something we take out of that equation and put into our equation some specifics and things that we actually do understand and know exactly what the boundaries are. So how does the specific thing work? Well, the easiest way is to go back and think about when we were in school and most of our teachers taught us about the main questions we normally ask. The who's, the what's, the where's, the when's, and the how's. Right. So that is basically the questions that we need to ask to be specific. So who's going to be involved in this agreement? And also thinking through, especially when we're working in teams, who is it impacting? Who's the other stakeholders that's possibly going to need to have either an input in it or they might have a contribution to it or they might be the people that will get the outcome or the result, the product. So who is involved? That's the very first thing that we need to ask ourselves. Then, in the case, of course, of me and my friend, the only two that's involved physically is me and my friend. Now, thinking a little bit further, I also have a family and my friend has a family, right? So whatever we arrange as our coffee date, we might need to consider what would be appropriate for those environments as well. So taking into consideration my family and our preferences and her family and her preferences. So there's always other people other than only the two that is in the agreement to take into consideration. So the who is involved is quite a broad thing that we need to think about. So it's not only the direct involvement, it is also the people that might have lighter involvement um, in between in this agreement. Then... What is being done? So we want to have coffee, right? So that would be the what is being done. Or in the case of a work project, maybe the what is being done is it is a project, so a smaller scope within a larger scope, which means we need to, as a team, complete one part before somebody else can complete their part. So the what is being done becomes really integrate. So we need to be very clear on what it is that we are doing and what it is that they will be doing. So we know exactly where those boundaries are. Then where will this take place? Now, for me and my friend, we didn't even agree on a coffee shop, right? Yes, we might have our favorite coffee shop, or we may not. We might decide that the coffee is going to be a walking coffee. So we go and grab a coffee somewhere and we take a nice stroll in the park. We did not discuss any of this. We only said we wanted to have coffee. So where will it take place? We need to be more specific. Then, of course, we also need to be specific as to the when because it's all good and well to say, well, we will go to this coffee shop and then I pitch up there in two weeks from now and she pitches up there in two months from now. We will definitely be missing each other. So when is really important. We need to determine the time and the date. So we are both clear on when this is taking place and what is going to happen for us. Then, of course, the how. Now, the how might differ and the how may or may not go into the agreement depending on what it is that we are agreeing on. 
I am not going to specify to my friend how she needs to drink her coffee. Right? Um, but in a project or in a different work situation, the how might be relevant because I might need to take into consideration other people or other teams that need to come into the equation. And because we are overlapping to some degree, right, we need to figure out how we're going to do our work and how the other team will do their work and then how these two will actually interlink. So the how might become a very important specific thing that we need to figure out during our agreement period. So that's why we have the who, the what, the where, the when, as well as the how, right? In some agreements, how will come into play and in others, maybe not so much. And this then brings us to our reflection question. Now, in our reflection, what I want you to really think about, and this goes back to being intentional about what it is that we do. So in our lesson around awareness, we talked a lot about attention and intention. And when we're setting agreements, the intention that would help us then to focus our attention is really important. So being intentional in this coming week, where do you think you need to set more agreements in your life versus expectations so that you can ensure that you can actually communicate effectively. And with that, I will leave you guys so you can reflect on that question a little bit more. And I am sure that you will continue setting great, great agreements versus expectations, which is only in our head in order for all of us to thrive as effective communicators. And then you can always get in contact with me either via my email, which is mariska at journey to the number two discover.com. Or alternatively, you can visit my website, which is journey to discover.com. Or I would love to connect with you via LinkedIn. And there you can send me a quick private chat message to say that you would like to connect. And we can continue our conversation from there. I would love to hear from you. And, of course, this is the last part of this specific episode. But ta -ta -ta, we have another series coming up, starting with the first one next week. So I would love to have you guys with us again next week on Talking Heads. Of course, that is the show that we are busy with at the moment at USA Global TV and Radio. And with that, I am signing off for today. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.